and welcome to Muscle News Weekly with me, Giles Thomas, and me, IFBB Pro, Rosie Rascal Hop. Rosie, how's your fortnight been? Really good. Mm, oh, I've been a bit ill this week with a chest infection of some mm-hmm. sort. Um, so I've not really been do- training. Mm-hmm. Week before was good. You were at the Olympia. I was away in Ireland. Yep. Doing some Ashtanga yoga. I was doing cryo baths. Mm-hmm. Um, photo shoot down on the sea in Dublin. Nude. And it was fucking freezing. <laughs> It was insanely cold, but yeah, it was really good fun. Should we show some of the pictures? <coughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to some nude pictures of Rosie. <laughs> yes, so that's the middle of September in Ireland, and it uh, looked uh, pretty chilly. Yeah, can we show can we show a picture of like reality behind the scenes? <laughs> yeah. So so the um, every time that they we would strike a pose, everything was so poised and and looked so sort of serene, and then the reality was a little bit more like this. Yes, so that looked fun, and uh, the ice bath, um, I'm, I, I, that's, that's pretty much out of my comfort zone, I'm afraid. The ice bath was crazy, like, uh, you can do two different types of cryo bath, I think, there's only two. One of them's like, um, I don't actually know how they do it. Uh, ice? No, because, <laughs> like, the one I got into was ice and water. Mm-hmm. And it was already at seven degrees. So you, ju- you jump in and it's already at a certain temperature. Yeah. There's other ones that like spin around and it, it's like, I don't want to say steam because it's obviously not steam, yeah. but it's um, like ice powder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our partner in the uh, Rosie Rascal range with the sh- show is brought to you by, um, he has, I was talking to him about this, and he has, um, he has an infrared steam room in his garage, yeah. and he has a, an ice bath, and it's set to five degrees. Yeah. Um, and he said the first few times, he said it was absolutely horrible, and he does, he does 20 minutes in the morning, and he said the first few times, he said the first few minutes were horrible. He said, but now I can do 20 minutes, then I go straight into my infrared sauna. Yeah. And I feel absolutely fantastic. He said, but it takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah. Was that how you found it? Yeah. Well, the, you did it once. Oh, <laughs> well, do you want to put the video up of me getting in? Oh, you've got a video? Yeah, I've got a video. Oh, okay. of the, but there's a video of the first couple of minutes. <laughs> and then later on when I kind of, basically, like your initial, well, my initial reaction was to move. Mm-hmm. Because you're cold and it's like you want to move. Right. But every time you move, the, the little nerve endings feel the cold. Right. So when I realized that actually the best thing to do is stay completely still. Yeah. And then you just have to focus on your breath and slow your breath down. Mm-hmm. Um, after probably like four minutes, I was totally fine. And then okay. I was like chatting to my friend and I could, I could have stayed in for, I stayed in for 10 minutes. Hmm. I could have stayed longer because by the time you get to 10 minutes, you're used to it. The body, um, it, it centralizes its body heat. Apparently, the, the, the body goes into like a survival mode. And so the first few minutes are absolutely horrible because it wants you to get out. Yeah. And I believe afterwards, it's how people go when they go into hypothermia. The, the, um, it, it all centers from the, uh, to keep the internal organs. Yeah. Um, well, well, like basically, I think within that 10 minutes, you can burn something like 200 calories. Wow. Because your body's trying to heat up. In 10 minutes? Uh Uh-huh. Well, that's more than the treadmill. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's an amazing tool for fat loss, Mm -hmm. especially, like, the last few weeks of prep Mm. to add in. Um, Like, maybe two, three times a week or something, do that. It would, it apparently really can help with fat loss, but it's really good for recovering inflammation okay. through the body as well. Well, Gerald Williams does cryotherapy, <coughs> uh, IFBB Pro, and also they say that if you drink extra cold water, it actually burns more calories, which is actually better for fat loss. So maybe that's along the same sort of lines? Something like that, but very different. But completely not the same. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay, well, I'll just show so you. I don't, I don't think if you start drinking ice cold water, you're going to get more shredded. Maybe that's like the top bro's secret. Yeah. It's just drinking, sucking on ice cubes. <laughs> okay, Rosie. Well, when you were in Ireland... You were in Vegas. I was in Vegas, yes. And... Uh, Wow, what an Olympia. Um, I was only there, well, four, just over four days in total, and it was just absolutely amazing. Um, what an Olympia. Obviously, uh, probably, I've been, that was my sixth Olympia, and I think that's, that's a pretty hard to top. Yeah. Olympia. <laughs> it was absolutely incredible. Um, obviously, we now have a new Mr. Olympia in yeah. Sean Roden. Well now done, it, Sean Roden. It's funny because I did the preview with uh, Ron Harris on Ronline, and the one, actually, the two that I couldn't really place in terms of where I thought they would place was Brandon Curry and Sean Roden. Sean Roden, I'll be honest, I kind of wrote him off after last year. Um, it's funny because we went, we mean uh, Ron were doing the interviews. Uh, at the Meet the Olympians on the Thursday night. And we went downstairs into the arena where, there was, where some of the pros were. And we were taking it in turns. And I said, and there was Sean was there. Sean Ross says, you do, Sean. And then Sean looked over and he, uh, he, he was saying to Ron, he says, yeah, I'm not sure about doing an interview with Giles. He says, because uh, he had, that guy had me eighth place last year. So, and uh, I just shrugged and walked off. And so I just went like that. So, and I'll be honest, I, he was not on my radar. I've actually said many times over the last sort of, I don't know, how many but he years. Had, he had, um, I can't think of the words. He, he had, he didn't, when I saw him at what show was it, the San Marino? Arnold Europe. The Arnold oh. Europe. That was the first time I'd ever seen him mm -hmm. live. And... I wasn't that impressed. He, he had, like you said, maybe he'd had an injury or something, hadn't he? Uh, his chest and his shoulders look very, his chest especially look very down in size. And I'll be honest, I didn't even have him third at the Arnold Europe. I yeah. thought I would have had him maybe fourth or fifth. Yeah. Now, the reason I had him so low last year, he took fifth place last year, I had him swap him with Nathan Diasha, was because on the Friday night he had a stomach. Now, it wasn't... What obviously it wasn't from one of the usual reasons that the guys have the stomachs because on the Saturday he came back and it was gone. Yeah. So it was obviously just a case of over carbon. Yeah. Um, fluid, whatever. Um, and um, yes, he was very seemed very sort of lost a lot of thickness and fullness in the upper body. I yeah. thought I thought this is this is him because he's over forty. He's forty three. Yeah. So I well forty two last year. So I thought well this is obviously his decline now. And, and then the... But he looked amazing, didn't he? Obviously, because he won Mr. Olympia. But when I saw the photos and the videos this time around, I was like, oh, my God, yeah. like, he looked insane. And you were saying, well, he's always been that good. But because I only really had seen him the yeah, last year, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I, I, you know, I there, there was slightly, like, a trophy, to, or whether he was just really flat for some reason. I there was know. a reason. What was it? He broke his jaw. Ah, yeah, you said He this. broke his jaw on his prep last year, and he said he had to blend everything and, and get his food through a straw. Yeah. So you can imagine that would affect your training, your diet, uh, everything. I mean, it would just be, it would be quite inconvenient prepping with a wired up jaw. Well, he certainly looked better this year after having been able to use his jaw again. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so... Like I said, I didn't see this one coming. Normally, I'm pretty good with my predictions, but like I said, I thought he, I thought this was like every, every year people say it about Dexter. I thought, oh, this is him starting to decline now. He's kind of missed his chance. He's had second at the Olympia in 2016, the year you did it. Um, but uh, I really do see this is this kind of he's kind of you know lost his chance. But obviously, he came back. <laughs> Look, it absolutely. hadn't even got started. No, and uh, he ties with Chris Dickerson, the 1982 Mr. Olympia, for the oldest Mr. Olympia at 43 mm. so nice this is hopefully it <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so fantastic in fact should we go to the moment of when yeah when it happened yeah let's go to that now please take the sandow trophy the olympia gold medal the check for four hundred thousand dollars and the title of 2018 Mr. Olympia. To our winner. And new one. Yeah!
Yeah, so that was that was a spine tingling moment. I mean, when when because Bob had him and Phil there, and uh, you know the final two, and he said the next name I will say won't be the runner up; it'll be the champion, the the winner. And as soon as Bob said the new, the whole place just, I mean, literally every single person jumped up. Um, I've actually got a bit of footage and the whole place just went ballistic. Mm. So if I'll go to that little bit of footage, this was done a few seconds after. This is when kind of Sean was kind of taking it all in. And I, well, as you'll see, I took the phone and I just did a little, uh, little spin just to see people's reaction. So let's go to that now. Yes, so that was fantastic. And like I said, I was saying before, um, I actually said many times over the last few years that the two that I believed had the knock, had the potential to have the knockout punch to win the Olympia and take it away from Phil were Cedric McMillan mm-hmm. and Sean Roden. I believe mm-hmm. they had the height, the structure, the aesthetics. Because I, I always had a feeling that aesthetics would start to play a role again. Last year, it seemed to be going out the window with Phil's stomach and Rami taking second, who isn't very aesthetic. But um, yeah, so I was absolutely thrilled to see someone with beautiful aesthetics. In fact, yeah. Sean actually, I, was, I think I was the only one that noticed this, and I got a bit of shit for this. On the Friday, when Sean first came out, he did have a little bit of distension. It was, very, it was barely noticeable, but he's got very thick abs. But there was definitely some lower ab distension. But the thing is, he peaked on the Friday, and I was... And, sh- and uh, Phil always peaks on the Saturday. Phil is known as Mr. Saturday Night. So, and Phil was just, Phil was off. Phil was off. Phil was smaller this year. And I don't think, I think the, the idea was to bring maybe the waistline down. Um, but it didn't, it, the, the waistline wasn't as bad as last year, but it was still, it was still, still a factor in him spoiling his kind of overall look. But um, he didn't quite have the same pop that he would normally have to his physique. Mm. So... But um, I've actually messaged Phil uh, a couple of times because he was at the Superstar Seminar on the Sunday and everyone was surprised because I don't think anyone expected him to turn up. Yeah. And he was very... And I, I, I was sat literally directly in front of him and I kind of... I was watching intently and I, I got some video. And to me, it did come across as genuine the way he spoke. Yeah. The way he spoke. So I messaged him and I said, look, Phil, you handled that really well, mate. I said, um, you know, fair play to you for turning up, showing respect to Sean. And, uh, and then he messaged back and he says, yeah, he says, I'll be honest, Giles. He said, that hurt. It hurt, man. Yeah. That really hurt. He says, but I wanted to, yeah. you know, show respect to Sean. He says, because, you know, I've, I've been the champ. But and, you know, I saw, like, it, you know, like when he, Phil would get dissed for kind of having that self-confident talk. And yeah. like, I, all, I just always felt like it was, it was the way a champion his mindset is you have to think you're the yeah. best and then the way that he's handled this shows that yes well you, you show more of who you really are when things aren't going your way yeah and I think he spoke really really well he seemed to um, he did a video that night in his hotel room which went up on social media I've watched it I think he came across he didn't have to do it um, and um and yeah, and the thing is, who's to say Phil couldn't come back and win it next year? Maybe that is the start of his decline of his physique. Maybe he was just off. Yeah, I saw as well um, some posts on his Instagram about maybe starting a family. Yes, a little gift. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, yeah, things like this um, kind of force you. 
to mm. rethink your purpose and your future. Well, like you, if it have won, yeah. again, it's like fate is kind of forcing you to keep going down that route. Mm. But to to have that shock mm -hmm. um, and things being taken out of your control, you know, like with me doing. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not comparing my London competition to the Olympia with Phil, well, but. If I'd have won my I, last show... I was just about to ask that. Yeah, if I'd have won my last show at London, I, I'm probably about 90% sure I would have then continued with bodybuilding and making my way to the Olympia. Yeah, well, you um, would have qualified by winning. Yeah, so I would have continued. So if Mar Margita hadn't have turned up or you'd have beaten her, you'd have had to have gone yeah, right I would have, last week competing in dieting. Yeah, I would have continued with that. And I know that it wouldn't have been a pleasant journey because, mm -hmm. I, because I know deep down that it's not for me now anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting sometimes that things like that can happen and at first it would seem like a negative, but it throws your life in a whole other direction that's actually maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. purposeful. So. I've got some footage of Phil talking about justice. Yeah. So uh, let, let, this was on the press conference, sorry, the press, the Superstar Seminar on the Sunday uh, where he talks about this in, uh, in a bit of detail. Okay, cool. So let's go to that now. Uh, there seems to be a, a newborn uh, child, so maybe that the works spell for motivation for next year. <laughs> that would be, uh, that would be pretty awesome. That would be something. <laughs> <laughs> a little gift. Folks, oh, seven okay. times Olympia champion. Yeah! <laughs> yes! Notwithstanding uh, last night's events, of course, you will go no matter what happens from this point on, you will go down in history as one of the best bodybuilders of all time. Obviously, your place in bodybuilding history, well secured. Um, that said, as Sean finds himself in unfamiliar grounds, being right there with Dan Sandow, you are equally in unfamiliar grounds. Uh, for the last seven years, bro, we've been doing this together. Um, you've heard that name come up, you heard the big call at the end. Um, yes, so he's talking about having maybe her little gift. Yeah. Her little gift. I loved it when he said that. But he's 39. Um, I'm assuming his partner is younger. Uh, and so he's, he's obviously thinking about it. And to be honest, I think that Phil's actually gained a lot of fans. He seems to have... It's always, you, I mean, there's a lot of people who don't like the guy. They don't like him. It doesn't matter what he does or what he says now. They are not going to turn around their opinion of him, no matter what. But for me... Um, Yes, I've seen a lot of uh, support coming Phil's way. And to be honest, it's probably took a bit of the pressure off now because now at least he can... The thing is, if he retires now, he's still... Like, I, I, I messaged him and he said, like, you know, he said, it's still an amazing feeling being a seven-time Mr. Olympia, which kind of got me thinking, is that him saying he's retiring? The um, but... thing is, you just look like... If you're, uh, you know, an intelligent person, you just adjust to the new situation. Yeah. You, you have to... Like an injury. I yeah, mean, you have to you, learn to you know. adjust. Otherwise, you get these people and it becomes a bit tragic where they, they're they not flexible with their mind. Um, yeah. So they have this one set idea of how things are going to go and then things don't go that way and they're, like, stuck in that, yeah. you know, where, say, for example, Phil would have only been happy of being that eight-time Mr. Olympia. It's like, well, it hasn't happened, so you have to mm. adjust your... Um, your mindset and you have to adjust what you then next have as a goal or what, mm. what you're going to be happy with. I mean, everyone was just kind of almost <coughs> accepting the point that he was just going to win 10 Olympias and he was just going to keep winning and winning and winning 10, 12. It was just like this guy was just not beatable. Yeah. Last year he came in with a stomach. He still uh, didn't get beaten by, you know, William Bonac and uh, Big Rummy. And um, and what about Big Rummy? He was placed because <coughs> people for the last few years have been thinking he would be the one to knock mm. Phil out, oh. and then he placed six, six, which six. must have been a hell of a knock for him as he, well. He was devastated. I heard um, people who've been speaking to him on the Friday night, and one person I won't mention his name. Uh, he said he said it's the first time he's ever. He knows Rami pretty well. It's the first time he's ever seen him use bad language. Yeah. And really, like, really angry. The thing is that the judging, Rami looked like he didn't want to be there. He didn't look good. He, I mean, 
Well, he's it's changed a, a few things, hasn't he? Because he's swapped mm. coaches. Yep. So maybe it was just um, like I'm not saying it's anything bad for the the old coaches, but sometimes certain situations, certain friends, certain coaches mm -hmm. are good for a, one phase of yeah, your life, yeah. and then they no longer serve you. And if you are still chained to that environment situation mm -hmm. when it no longer serves you you it'll start to show physically and it mentally it just didn't look like he wanted to be there it wasn't the same rammy that just he just looked like his, his mind was elsewhere maybe he but... needs a bit more like freedom to oh. figure out prep on his own like... well he's going back to egypt i believe i believe he's now working with hanny rambod mm -hmm. uh, phil heath's coach um, so that's obviously a big change. He's, the thing is, I mean, the thing is, he's been out, what, five, six years in Kuwait. He's originally from Egypt. He has to have been away from to your family home, yeah, five, six years. He was a fisherman before. This is a long, a long, long time. Yeah, and I, you know, it's just... Who knows, even maybe like the last two years he might have been homesick. Yeah, it's, it must be tough. I mean, Brandon Curry being out in Kuwait, he's got four children yeah. and a wife. Yeah. Imagine it's like... You know, imagine sort of saying goodbye to them at the airport and say, right, see you in six months then. Yeah. That must be heartbreaking. I mean, yeah. it must be hard. Yeah. So it must be very tough. People sometimes forget that that, you know, that's that's a big thing for these guys. They are away. They're not from Kuwait. They're, they're there, you know, and it's a very kind of, it's a sort of environment where it is all geared towards getting them improvement and it's bodybuilding, bodybuilding. They can't really escape it. Yeah. But um, I will say this for I'm, Ram. Yeah, go on. Sorry. I will say this for Rami. The transformation he did from the Friday to the Saturday was nothing short of unbelievably miraculous. I was absolutely blown away. And I feel he could have, oh, I don't know, I don't know, he would have beat Bonac. He probably would have beat Bonac. He probably would have been third or fourth maybe because he looked, he transformed. I don't know what he did overnight, but I mean, everything was better. It just, it, it was like, a four-week, six-week difference in 24 hours. Mm. So, obviously, he wasn't peaked right. Yeah. So, um, but, um, yeah, he. but obviously the, the, the decision had been made, so he was out of the top four, the top yeah. five. But, um, yeah, but he's very disappointed. But um, I think next for Rami, I think maybe go do the Arnold. But, again, these, the, this is what I mean. Like, when things are out of your control and this big thing happens where he places way lower than anyone would have expected, mm. has probably given him the... Impetus. Impetus and confidence to make a change that maybe he's wanted for a while. Yeah. So if he'd have done better still, it, if he'd have done better, yeah. he may have stayed in a situation that was not actually progressing him. Well, it's like if you'd, in a lot have, of other ways. if you'd have won London, you'd have probably done the Olympia. If he'd have come second again or won, he's not going to go, is no, he? No, 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 no. So this, is, this has been the catalyst for his change. Yeah. And um, I just wish him all You've the best. You've got to see the positives, haven't you, in these... Um, yeah. The, the more challenging mm. competitions that you do, there's always something good that comes out of it. Yeah. And I, I, I believe what I've heard is that they left on good terms. Yeah. And I think it's never, it's always going to be, it's always going to have an end date. Yeah. There's always going to be a day when they go like Nathan left, um, you know, uh, Brandon's still out, Brandon Curry is still out there. Roly is out there. And uh, in fact, I want to talk about Roly next. Things change. Human beings are always changing, progressing. Yeah. And, you know, everything has a, a, a short life, don't they? Yeah, has a, yeah, has a uh, sell by date. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, best before half life. <laughs> half life. Half life. Yes. So um, yeah, and also Roly. Now I will say, Roly pulled off what I wanted to pull off. Oh yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> well, what have I been saying all year about Roly and Rami? Think about. That Rowley could beat Rame. Yes. That's what I've wanted to see because I believe, in my eyes, for me anyway, I believe he is a better physique. I think he's yeah. a better bodybuilder. I think he's more, better put together. And uh, But it's never actually happened. He's never actually placed... Well, I think he has maybe four. I think 2013, I think Rowley was sixth. Rami was seventh. I might be wrong. I'll have to go check. 
But um, yeah, Rody looked absolutely fantastic. And he looked even better on the Saturday. And it all, like he did what he did from the Arnold to the Arnold Australia. It all came off his waist. And his, his ab and thigh went from being one of his worst poses to one of his best poses. And it all comes down to that midsection because he's got everything. He's got ridiculous amounts of muscle. Um, he also won the People's Champ Award mm -hmm. uh, from that silly voting thing. Oh, Cedric should have won that. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah, I was a bit surprised actually. I thought um, I don't know. Well, I thought the People's Champ Award would go go upon who they thought was the best, which because every because we we checked all the uh, all the all the feedback and every it was about eighty percent people on the Friday after the Friday show all had Roden winning. Yeah. So I thought Roden might win it, but obviously Roley is obviously a huge fan favorite, yeah. and how. I don't think anyone had Roly winning it, but obviously he won the, the fan favourite. So that's. But that's actually, a good thing. saying that, like, I know that Cedric has a big fan base, but I think he doesn't interact on his social media mm. all that much, does he? Mm. And, like, I know he's really busy and stuff, but. Yeah. It would be nice to see a little bit more from him. But the thing is with Cedric, as you know, he's got a lot going on. Yeah, you know, crazy. The youth, the youth projects and, you know, his, his military stuff. And yeah. In fact, there was something happened at the press, press conference, and I'll show you a little clip of my reaction. As it happened. Okay. Let's go that now. Well, I just had a really, really bang border meltdown against Cedric. Cringe. Yes, so uh, William had a little bit of a launch at Cedric. Now, I love William. I've, I, he's a fantastic bodybuilder. I've been in his corner since 2011, 2010. Love the guy. Love his physique. Uh, I think he was bang out of order saying that to Cedric because Cedric, you could see Cedric was very upset. And it's funny because I've had a lot of people kind of on the, on the MD board saying, no, 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 he did, Cedric deserved that. And I'm thinking, well, why did he deserve that? No, the thing is, if people are there, they want to hear, and they're, they're fans of William Bonnack, they want to hear what William's got to say about how he, him. They don't want to see him attacking someone because he was ignored by Cedric backstage. I just thought that was a really weird thing to come out with. And I just, it, I was literally sinking in my chair going, oh, you can, in fact, you can hear on the video of Ron Harris me going, oh, no. <laughs> Cedric's just very quiet when it's, when he's about, when it's before show day. Well, it, like when we were in Japan and we had like three, four days there, it was like the first three days was like fun. We was like all talking and everything. And then the day of the show, it was very, very quiet. Yeah. And I was trying to be as rascally as possible. And it was, <laughs> yeah. But for me, like there's something about being aware of other people's energy and being able to maneuver around it i i could tell that he was more quiet and insular so i would not speak to him as much and just let yeah. back off and let him you don't have to take things personally mm, i think that's what happened with william william yeah. took it personally he yeah. was pissed off and he didn't like it but you should know that that's not the first time he's competed against cedric i even i know that cedric gets really bad anxiety yeah. he gets very very within himself he puts his headphones on i saw him at san marino and i just stayed out of it. i just knew to stay out of his way yeah but I, but then when we went for nando's when he came over and i said cedric what's what is it with this scowl on show day and he just went and he just kind of looked and he smiled and he went oh man he says that's, that's every day that's every day he says in fact my four-year-old son got it yeah i think Sometimes it's good not to take things so personally all the time because you don't you don't know what's going on in someone else's head. You're only taking your interpretation, interpretation yeah. and perception of something, but it doesn't mean that that's tr the truth. It's only what's, what you're thinking, yeah. but you don't know what that person's feeling. But do you know what it is? This year has been a year for talking smack between the bodybuilders. Yeah. And talking smack should be... You know, I'm going to kick your ass on stage. But to me, it's about like a boxer. I'm like, gonna, did I'm, you even train those calves? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Stuff that's talking smack. But what actually William did, he made it something. This was something that he maybe should have done privately, face to face, or by even text, or just send him a private message. I just feel like it was really inappropriate to do that. And in fact, Nathan Nathan the Asher did something similar with Sergio, and he's like, Sergio, why are you even here? And uh, Sergio's known for dropping a few uh, controversial, yeah, controversial comments. But I thought Sergio handled Nathan really well. He fought. He, he, I said to I messaged Sergio yesterday. I said, "You fought hate with love." He actually he actually started praising Nathan, and Nathan just went. <laughs> he just said nothing. But I don't know. I, I think this year the, the, the press conference was a bit weird. This year <laughs> it was a bit weird. There was. I mean, you had like. 
you know, like the bloody men's physique guy hit, guys mm-hmm. hitting, hitting each other with their handbags and and uh, it was just like, what is going on? And then uh, Jose and Flex Lewis turned it around. Have I got some footage? Were they of being that? nice? I've actually got a bit of footage of... Was there uh, a bromance? No, 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 not the, with each other, but they were just talking in a more, more positive, positive yeah. inspirational way. In fact, I've got a bit of footage of Jose nice. uh, encapsulating everything that this uh, press conference should have been about. But, you know, I learned from the best, you know, as I said, 26 years ago when I started this, and I see how Jim handles himself. That's how I like to handle myself. That's how I want to represent myself within the IFBB. So I will not be calling out people. I will not be talking in that manner. I'll just show up and do my best, do my job with class. No better way to go out, Jose, and certainly I wouldn't expect anything less from you, my friend. Best of luck here in your last Olympia. Yes, so it's uh, the two guys that now are are no longer going to be competing. Jose's done with competing for good. Flex Lewis is done competing in the 212. Hopefully he's going to come back as an Open. Um, So, yeah, if we want to talk about Flex Lewis, Flex Lewis absolutely blew my socks off. Yeah. He, I, it it was like... Are you going to cry? I'm going to cry, yes. (laughs) No, it was, the photos we see of Flex Lewis at four or five weeks out, they're kind of bittersweet because you're like, oh my God, everyone just kind of loses their shit online. And then a lot of us who know kind of what's really going to happen, we know that that's flex at probably 225. Looks better. Yes, but then you know that in a few weeks' time, he's going to lose that 12, 13 pounds and he's going to look good, but he's not going to look as, as impressive. But what happened was he turned up looking that impressive. He turned up looking like the flex we've always wanted to see in the 212. He turned up looking like an open. Everything was popping. I mean, he blew away last year's um, showing away. He looked absolutely phenomenal. It was such a clear first place. Everyone else was fighting for second. So I was absolutely amazed, to be honest. I, don't know, I mean, uh, I spoke to, spoke to Flex at the seminar, and, uh, and he said, yes, he will be. He looks like he is coming back as an Open. Um, he said Neil's, um, Neil's decided that he was laughing. Next year or in I, a couple of years? I think 2020 is when we're going to see Flex Lewis come back. And okay. I said to Flex, I said, Flex, I've got a number in my head. I said, I might even write it down. I said, what do you think your absolute best weight is? And he said, 226. I, I, and I had 225 in my head. So I'm only a pound out. So. <laughs> Yeah, maybe cut his hair or something. But um, yeah, so it looks like we will see Flex Lewis come back. But um, but yeah, so Flex, well, what can you say really about that? Uh, we'll come back to Flex afterwards. Uh, yes. Oh, and also, as has become tradition at the Olympia yeah. press conference, would you like to know if I sang Five, fin- Five Finger Death Punch? Yeah. You'd like to know? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll show it to you then. Okay. <laughs> Go to this now. can't just live your motherfucking life. Oh, but I'm always fucking high. You've got rocks in your head. I can hear the rolling around. Yes, so I was getting some eyebrow dancing. <laughs> May as well utilise your skills. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Skill set. Yes. So, okay. Oh, yes. I managed to get an interview with Jay Cutler as well mm-hmm. um, because I missed it, obviously, when I went to see him the other week in Birmingham. <clears throat> did a really nice interview. Um, I did my couldn't say muscular development. So that, it, was a, it was a second take interview and everyone started laughing because there was loads of people there. And I could, it was the only happened once, though. Yeah. Because it. I can't actually say musculardevelopment.com, especially when I'm at the expos or I'm at the shows and it's very busy. It just comes out as blah, 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 blah. And uh, that happened with Jay Keller. So, so, yes. It's when you speak, try and speak too well. Oh, okay. Because slow, if you try slow. and speak posh, but if you do it in my accent, musculardevelopment.com, <laughs> it's really easy. Okay. So maybe you have to do a Yorkshire accent every time you say it. Try it in a Yorkshire accent. No, I must, no, I can't, I can't do it. So anyway, and um, as you know, with my interviews, I do like to throw in the old random question. Yeah. And I said, Jay, I said, this might seem like an unusual question. I said, but when you go away, because we're talking about him doing all these tours, mm. UK and globally. I said, who looks after your dogs? And everyone laughed. 
and uh, and he said, oh no, because that uh, clusters. What was the word? I forget the word he used. Uh, he said he usually takes them with him, and the other ones stay at home, and his girlfriend's girlfriend looks after them or something. Mm. So, yeah, but that was nice. I managed to get my interview with Jay. I just it was uh, complete luck that we passed him. Actually, we saw him on one of the, these little trade stands, and uh, yes, so that was fantastic. Cool. Okay, thank you, Jay. <laughs> and um, also in the two twelve. Um, the three that I would like to specifically talk about were Nicholas Vuliu, Ricardo Correa, and Sean Clarida. And there's another one, but I'll leave him till next. Mm -hmm. um, Nicholas took 11th, 11th place. Mm -hmm. He was second call out. And Patrick Tura, his coach, <clears throat> was disappointed because he wanted Nicholas to be first call out. Yeah. But he looked the best he's looked all year. He looked absolutely incredible. Um, in fact, should I say about... Uh, yeah, the way, uh, the way in, um, they'd had some trouble because um, I think the night before he was eight pounds over. He was 220 the day before the weigh in. Um, and then Patrick explained to me in, in great graphic detail about what, the, bear, in, bear in mind, there's a lot of people around. And he said uh, he had to take um, an, like an emergency laxative to try and get some weight out. And uh, he says, <laughs> so people were walking past, and he says, yeah, so Nicholas took one in his mouth and one up his ass. <laughs> I was like, Patrick, can you, can you say that a bit quieter? Because if that gets quoted anywhere, <laughs> that is not going to look good for Nicholas. So, yes, so they, they, there was a bit of a panic, and, um, and obviously they, you know, they cut his water and everything. And, uh, yeah, they managed he made it. He made it by, he was 212 bang on, I believe. <sighs> So when I saw Nick, it's so stressful when yeah. you've got to make weight. He's that his body wants to be two thirty, even two twenty was a struggle. The only time I've ever ever had to make weight is when I did um, the Arnold's two thousand and thirteen in the bodybuilding, and it was under fifty five kg. You're fifty three, weren't? I think I was fifty three kg, but there was Branca. I've forgotten a second name. Sorry. We'll there was, bring the name up. Yeah, there was Branca, and she was. I think she was like bang on the weight, 55. She was having to go for like saunas and stuff like that. But that, it was like the realisation when I was in the line thinking, well, I'm 53 kg. She's struggling to make weight and she's fucking shredded. <laughs> she was, yeah, I remember. So, yeah, that was like when I was realising, okay, I don't think I'm in condition. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. don't think I've nailed this one. Yeah. 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 2013, that was, I was covering it with... Um... She was like Dorian Yates condition. Oh, she was incredible. She gets incredible. Cre like, I She made you look like a figure girl. Yeah, I did look like a figure girl. But um, but I um, I went up to her backstage and I was like, can I touch your glute? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just wanted to know what they felt like so that I could somehow <laughs> try and remember next time I prepped and see if mine like felt... Because they were just solid. It was the most. It was the most shredded woman I'd ever seen in my life at that point. Can't believe she stole my chat up line. What? Me? Oh right, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> missed that one. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so Nicholas, yeah, took eleventh place, um, and he is going to remain as a two twelve for next year. I'm, I'm very, very happy to report. And uh, yes, so we went up some food afterwards and um, he was on his phone. He was in TGI's. It was on the Friday night, I believe. And we were all talking amongst ourselves and Patrick and uh, Francisco Barrios, who got second in the Amateur Olympia. He's only 23 years old. Uh, he looked fantastic. He, um, and then we looked over and oh, Nicholas was asleep. Sleep. He was fast asleep. He was absolutely exhausted. I don't know what's next for him yet. I would like to maybe see him do Korea, which was yesterday. Uh, but, you know, I think he just, he, he said he had to get back to Switzerland. I think he had clients. Work and stuff. Yeah, because he's been away in America for the, the last thing few is, weeks. as well, it's like, just knowing to just take your time with stuff mm. because sometimes it's it's nice to go with the momentum and see how much you can achieve in one year, but also mm. to just kind of think, well, actually, like, he's already won a pro show. He's made it to the Olympia. Mm -hmm. That's enough yeah. achievements for the one year. Second to Hadi at Portugal. He won Tampa and he's just took a level place at the Olympia out of 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, he could have been a couple of places higher, but the main thing is he nailed it. He yeah. absolutely nailed it. He looked fantastic. The response was great. 
Um, he's, you know, he's, he's on his way. So, well done, Nicholas. Really proud of you. Uh, Ricardo Correa moved up one spot from ninth place to eighth place this year. He looked very, very good. The stomach was down. Oh, well. <laughs> and uh, private joke. Uh, Ricardo, yeah, so he looked, he, he was very, very much improved. He was, uh, it was noticeable. It, it was noticeable improvements. Yes, uh, so uh, very, very, very happy for Ricardo there. I know he wanted top five, but uh, like it is with Sean Clarida, he uh, also moved up one spot. He was, sorry, Ricardo went from 10th to 9th this year. And uh, Sean Clarida went from ninth to eighth. I was actually outside talking to Sean um, when he found out his placing because he looked on his phone and he went. He was gutted as well, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he wanted he wanted sixth because they only placed the top five, and I think he hoped he was the sixth place guy. Yeah. But um, Dave Henry took sixth, okay. um, so there's no shame. I've really seen behind. anything about Dave Henry. He looked good. He looked really good. Yeah, he looked fantastic. I've not seen any posts or anything. Yeah. Maybe I'm not looking. Hard. Well, he just took uh, second yesterday in Korea to Hadi Shupan. Yeah, he is good. Like, Very he was good. one of my favourite mm-hmm. physiques for a long time. Looked as good as he ever has. I mean, yeah. he looked, um, yeah, he yeah, could have been top five, I suppose, but he wasn't. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he looked very good. Um, and Sean Clarida, for me, um, 165 pounds he weighed. <laughs> he was actually lighter. He was 172 at the Olympia last year, and he wanted a really nailless condition even more this year. So he's a 165, and he really stood out. I was talking to Ricardo. He, he always seems like such a nice guy. He always yeah. seems really happy. I was, talking, I was talking to Ricardo, and Ricardo said, I had Sean Clarida fourth. Right. I had him fourth place. Um, he really stood out. He's just got that. He's Perfectly got that cut. put together. Yes, those delts and everything's full, and and he keeps improving. He keeps coming back, and uh, yeah, he looked absolutely really really fantastic. So yeah, so it was a good good showing for all three of those guys. And next is my one time co host for Moss News Weekly, Kamala Gar- Gargney. Um, that's this photo. Okay. Um, You'll have to push uh, it. Photos I took. This was in 2001 of Kamal. He won the Nava Britain short class and overall. And this one is of Flex Lewis in 2004 when he was a junior, uh, when he won the Nava Britain junior class at 20 That's years like old. classic baby shark. Baby shark, yeah. He does look like a baby shark. Rosie thinks he looks like a baby shark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. So the, the reason I brought those two up because I think they should have been one and two. I, I didn't have Derek Lunsford second. Derek Lunsford looked very, very good, but for me, Kamal was a clear second place. I think Kamal just. I thought he stole the show in terms of, you know, in terms of like with Flex. I, you know, he was the shock of the show, much like he was at the Arnold, and he was exactly. What I said was going to happen, he was going to turn up 10, 15% better than he did at the Arnold. That's exactly what he did. His condition was incredible. And um, yes, but he had a bit of a mishap a few days before. He was posing for Chris Aceto, his coach. Yeah. And in, I think it was a readable bicep and his calf snapped. So he was, the think, thing is, it actually Must News Weekly, uh, the one I did with him a few weeks ago, if you watch it. I said, have you ever had any injuries? And he says, oh, I've got something going on in my calf at the moment. He said, I can't figure out what it is. So obviously there was some sort of... Some little, some tightness or some micro tears or something. And it just snapped. Imagine if that snapped on... Fucking My old boss, John Citrone, he was guest posing once and his calf snapped on stage. Oh, no. I can't even imagine the pain. Yeah. So so I saw uh, Kamal on on the Thursday night at the weigh-in. And he said, uh, he said, Jazzy, he says, do you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. Was he limping? I don't, I didn't, don't remember seeing him limping. But he was, um, well, he must have been. I, I he stood still when I was talking to him. <laughs> Wasn't jumping about, you know, hopping about or anything, doing burpees. But, uh, yeah, he said, um, he, said, I'm wor- he said, the posing routine I put together, it's a lot of floor poses. He right. says, I can't get down. He said, it's too painful, so I'm just having to ice it, ice it, ice it. Oh, this is on the Thursday. He didn't compete till the Saturday. So... Yeah, so... Did he do his routine on that? Did he do the poses or did he adjust it? I'm just trying to think now because obviously I'm doing the play-by-play. I'm doing typing and I was looking up and I don't remember seeing any floor poses. Mm. I'm pretty sure he didn't, actually. That's a very good point. 
No, it wouldn't have been worth the risk, maybe, to get stuck down there. Yeah, but if you look, because Patrick noticed he had one big calf. Oh. <laughs> I mean, his calves are fan fantastic. Somebody on the forum said, uh, uh, why is why is Kamal had a calf implant? And it's like, well, one thing, Kamal's got fucking fantastic calves. And for another thing, why would he just get one done? Why do some people just, like, not... It's funny, like, sometimes, you know, people... Um commenting and stuff and it seems like they're big bodybuilding fans but they seem to know nothing about <laughs> about people's body they seem to know uh, nothing about what it actually takes to mm, get to that level or what the body is put through or yeah. do you know what i mean like the comments that are made sometimes it's just like why are you even following these the, people the comments made by people that compete are always different yeah there's a different level of insight for the people that, you know, when they talk about conditioning and talk about peaking and stuff, there seems to be more of a level of understanding. Yeah. When, it's like when I, I've been writing for magazines nine years before I competed. I competed and looked, looked pretty good. I won my first show. And it's funny that the people that, um, I, I had a good reputation built up, but once I competed and sh showed that I could do it, and I talked the talk, walk the walk, pairs the pairs. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it definitely got a bit more credibility. And I think it gave me more insight as well of understanding, you know, maybe showing a bit more, I can't think of the word, well, understanding of what it takes, you know, yeah. to bring a good physique, you know. Yeah. And it's like people say, oh, he's, um, he, oh, he's blown, he's fat, he's, he's out of condition. I'm thinking, well, he's got shredded glutes. He's just holding a bit of water on his yeah, like when, left, on his, on his lower back. It's like he's not, he's not fat. It's when, like... I, I saw comments, I've seen, like, comments before, like when... Um, I think it was the San Marino one, and then this time people put in comments about Cedric saying, <laughs> well, if he would just come in condition, it's like he is in fucking yes. condition. Like, do yes. you not realise? I just think, are we taking really bad photos on our phone or something? I'll tell you what was funny. You know my interview I did with um, on Chick Chat with Carly Thornton? Yes. Someone put a comment underneath saying, oh, God, guys, you, you're using so much code Oh, I saw code that. chat, just come out with it. And I was thinking, what? And and through the whole interview, we don't even like, we're not even using any code for, I think they're like thinking that we're trying to not say anything about supplements or right, okay. like certain things you have to do in competing. And we don't even discuss it. Oh, really? There's I've not, not actually watched it. I've just no, skimmed through it. We don't even, we don't even touch <laughs> upon them subjects. So we've probably not even watched it. I don't even know what he's talking about, but mm. some of the comments you get off people. Very silly. Okay, now back to Kamal. Would you like to see a video of me and Kamal <laughs> stood in front of the Sandow? Yeah. The Sandow. Luke Sandow. No, not Luke Sandow. The actual Sandow trophy. Yeah. It was at the seminar and you could touch it and have a selfie with it. So I, th I said, Kamal, get yourself over here, mate. I'm going to do a little video. And this is what we came okay. up with. Okay. Superstar seminar with uh, this blokey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kamal, mate, you must be feeling pretty happy. Oh, my God. It's never, ever like this feeling, man. Come on, man. It's... He was like, oh, Charles, he sent me a voice, voice message yesterday. He said, well, I hope I make top five. I was like, what? And I thought you had second, mate. Yes. Yeah. Not just you, Charles. Believe me, everyone. Yeah, yeah. And you had second. Is... This is the truth. It should be, but well, I don't know. I accept it. The judges, they made their mind. They're happy. I'm happy. First time. When the first Olympia, first like pro show. Yeah, yeah. Arnold, third at the Olympia. What else, man? What a year. What a achievement. What a year. Next year, I think you could challenge for the title, mate. Flex oh, is gone, man. I think. Oh, man. I'm going back home. I am starting straight <laughs> Yes. So watch what's going to come. So we really need to come from the old man. Yeah, old, old granddad here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Second man. wind. You, do, you need to step up your publicity as well, which I'll take care of. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you need to help me with that because the media. I'm sh <laughs> You're getting better. You're getting better. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. I've got a lot of followers, a lot. You're building them up. But it's yeah. sorry, I and mean, always they always moan. We need the new, the update, this, that. Well, I'll oh, come I'm down. I'll come down. I'm not a media guy. I'm not a media guy. Even I send it to you. I know, we'll, we'll do it. Yes, we'll, we'll do it. Keep the lamb and couscous coming in the... Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. All the time. No, no, nice no, food no, at Kamal's. No, 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 no. Now my wife back. Okay. When you eat my wife's food. Okay, cool. You're going to forget <laughs> my, what my sister did, believe me. Oh, I'm really? Not, that was nice. We're going to nice. have it again. And then I'll be eating with you. Okay, now <laughs> he's definitely going to win the Olympia next year. So, oh, yes. Uh, okay, guys. Well, uh, we'll, as you know, so... Uh, 
be up there. Quite, quite fitting, you know, you'll be up oh, on the yeah. table. Yeah, and, yeah, I've got uh... space for that. I've got space. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, All right. see you later. Yes, so that's me and Kamal uh, stood in front of the Sando. Um, I managed to have a little stroke too. Oh, I'm so pleased. Of the you. Sando, not Kamal. Right, we're not going down this route again. Okay. Well, no, I was the, the trophy I meant. The yeah. Trophy. I touched the it. In your own day. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. It's graceful. Um, yes. So, yeah. And so, obviously, next year with Flex out of the picture, Jose's retired now. Is it going to be Kamal's versus. Lunsford. Derek Lunsford. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be a really exciting one because I still, I, I do believe Derek will be the 212 Olympia champion one day. But now Kamal's come along and he's just, mm. he's getting better. He's 46, but he's getting better. Now, I mean, you've got like guys like, um, well, uh, Sean Roden at 43, winning the Olympia. You've got Dexter still looking great at 49. 48, 49, 49. Um, so, yeah, and he, he looks healthy, he looks, he looks good, and he's... he's, he's Is Dexter going to carry on, though? Well, I had a feeling, I was doing the play-by-play when Dexter was on stage doing his posing routine, and I could just had a feeling with the music he was using and the way I just had a, a, a very, very strong, instinctive feeling that this was going to be his last. Mm. Because he did say, for the last few years, he said, as soon as I place out of the top six, that's me done. Yeah. Um, he did look very good, um, as he always does, but someone screenshotted and sent from his Instagram, put it on the forum as I was typing this, as I said that about, you know, I've got a feeling this yeah. is his last one. They said, he said, because I think he knew after the judging he wasn't top four, probably not top six, that um, that was it. So I think he kind of, I, I, have, I, have, I have briefly saw it, but I, I do believe this may be his last Olympia. There. So, because he always said, you know, as long as I've uh, make him top six. Yeah. But he took uh, well, seventh. Okay. Seventh. So, um, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So, next year will be very interesting for 212, Kamal. And, you know, Kamal's literally nearly double his age. I mean, uh, Derek Lunsford is, what, 25? And, That's so crazy. And Kamal is like 46. Um, he no. was very happy that Kamal was kind of. Cause, because. Getting this opportunity. No, because Kamal guest posed that the first show that. Flex either went to or competed in. So, and there he is all these years later, 16 years later, and he's literally, they've been moved next to each other in the comparison. So, in fact, let's go to a bit of footage from the 212 uh, judging and in the pose, a little bit of a montage. Let's go mm-hmm. to that now.
those quick. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay now. Hurry up, woman. Yes. I forgot to talk about it. <laughs> Bollocks. Well, we're up to. So that was uh, all the 212 shenanigans. So, uh, Rosie. Why are you doing jazz hands all the time? Today? Jazz hands work well, because. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Rosie, are you way too fucking swole? Not at the moment. <laughs> I'm certainly not after a week in Vegas. No, I've got Four days. like zero muscle at the moment. Well, I'll ask you again. Are you way too fucking swole? Do you want me to say yes? Well, this guy is. Okay. I'm way too fucking swole. I love it. I'm way too fucking swole. I love it. I'm way too fucking swole. I love it. Your boyfriend doesn't live, Mick Skinny. I'm a fit fuck, I like to lift stuff. I'm a fit fuck, I like to lift stuff. I like to train hard, I like to be buff. Yes, so he is way too fucking swole. I love those funny videos. They're good, aren't they? So. Yeah, there's one, I don't know whether it's the same guy, but there's one where a guy's like doing loads of like crazy dancing to that call on me, call on. Yeah. And he's got like a little band and he's like doing loads of gyrating and like worm on the floor. That's the guy that we did the uh, get way wasted. Yeah. W-H-E-Y, yeah. weight protein, wasted. That was a good one, yeah. So very good. So mm. yes, very funny. Yes, okay. Also on the, was it Thursday night, I was lucky enough to go to the Las Vegas premiere of the new film Bigger. Uh, the new Joe Weider film, uh, biopic, I believe it's called. Uh, so we'll go to the trailer now and uh, have a watch of that. Copycats from Canada, huh? Maybe he should be taken seriously. You do create strong competitors, Mr. Hawk. Thank you. But to create an impeccable man? One more, one more. It takes dignity and grace, qualities you know nothing about. Good luck. This is just the beginning. We'll show them just how well our methods work. You're relentless, Joe. Oh, my. You know what your problem is? You have to man it up. Intensify. Let's do this. Exciting, right? Kid, welcome to the big time. We're the biggest and the best, Joe. I love it. What are you doing? Tired. Can not much longer. <laughs> yes, so I was lucky enough to be at the premiere with Ron Harris, watching that with all the film stars, all the people, the directors. Um, I've got little clips of the director stood up doing a little kind of introduction. What suit did you wear? That's what I need I, to wear. I think I wore this one, this, this suit, actually. Yeah. And I was sat at the back with... Um, the guy in the film that introduces Joe Weeder to Betty Weeder. And it was funny watching his reaction when he saw himself on screen. But um, I've got to admit, though, me and Ron Harris had a very nerdy moment. Yeah. We kind of scoffed. We were like, oh, 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 when we saw Callum Von Moga as Arnold. Yeah on a leg press that we knew was probably built in the last 10, 15 years. And people were looking at us and were going, <laughs> that leg press, that wasn't around in the 1970s. That probably wasn't manufactured till 2003. It's, so was that the only nerdy moment of the whole weekend? Well... I'm, I'm figuring there was a few more. <laughs> yes, that probably wasn't um, <laughs> the only one. But um, I've got to say about this film, I did enjoy it. The first 10 minutes, I was like, oh, no, this is really cheesy. Mm. But it got good. Mm -hmm. And um, Callum Von Moga. Do you think it'd be, say, like a film that people would walk, go and watch that had no clue about bodybuilding? Or do you think it's more just people who already have that 
I don't know. I don't know. It's more like a TV style movie, but I thought it was, I really enjoyed it. I did. I didn't know. I had no expectations. Um, it kind of got better as it went along. Um, I really love films like this that are about, it can be any sport or anything like there's the tennis one. Yeah. Yeah. The, we the, watched the, the Formula One. Yeah, the Formula One, mm. or there's like ones about uh, musicians, anyone that basically has to get to the top of their Skating, game. Tony Harding. Yeah, and it's like a competition maybe between mm. two people. I love films like that. Yeah. I love them. Well, this was about the rivalry between Joe Weider and Bob. They've changed the name, actually. Yeah, I, I, think, think, I'll, I think I'll enjoy this film. Uh, and actually, one of the guys in it who uh, we were chatting to before, I was thinking, I recognise him from somewhere. He had like a big ginger beard. He was... Bob in the film, Bob, sorry, the last, forget his last name. He was like his assistant who ends up defecting to the IFBB. Right. Now, he was the guy that was in uh, one of my, what's the, one of my favourite films I like to watch over and over again? Not Batman. The frigging um, Pacific Rim. Yeah, <laughs> Pacific Rim, the first one. Well, he's the, the Australian dad. Of one of the All right. characters. Yeah, he, it was him, obviously, got the beard on. Okay. Um, he reminded me a bit of, what's his name, out of Breaking Bad? Yeah, he does look like him. Yeah, he, was a, he reminded but I was thinking, I know him. Because when we got in there, the guy who plays Bob, uh, Ron says, oh, you, he's, he's, he plays an angel in this. And Ron's seen him in loads of stuff. So we had a photo with him. Um, I, I, I recognised him, but I, I couldn't, couldn't place him. But um, yes, and also, I've got to say, the actual start, the, the guy who played Joe Weider was very good. I really liked him. I thought he was quite captivating. But the for me, the star of the film was Callum Von Moga. Absolutely amazing. I tell you what, they could... I, I just, I couldn't even... It was Arnold when he was younger. I mean, obviously the physique's slightly different, but I think, like, his, his, his charisma, his the way he looked, it was eerie, honestly. It was, I bet Arnold, but the first, I bet the first time Arnold sees that, I bet he, I would love to see his reaction because it, I could just imagine Arnold going absolutely crazy for it. Amazing. But, um, have you ever met anyone that looks like you? No, no one that lucky. <laughs> no. But anyway, Callum Moga, like I've always thought he was a bit of a, um, a bit of a poo poo head. A poo poo head. <laughs> Bit of an insta, I'll say it, insta wanker. Oh. You know, one of these kind of YouTube sensations, the kind of people yeah. that don't yeah. really compete in big shows. They yeah. kind of just, they get fame from social media, which is something I'm not really uh, into. But um, I'll tell you what, that kid has got something. He, he was fantastic. Like uh, Dan Solomon, I've got a bit, um, in fact, I'll show a bit of, um, of executive uh, associate producer, producer Dan Solomon. I was talking to him after the show and I, I was filming him. So let's go to that now. Loved it. Man, loved it. Did you guys enjoy it? Really loved it, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. We're really hoping that everybody enjoyed the sequel. With Absolutely loved it. Callum Von Moger as Arnold. Yeah, he wanted to make it spooky. It's funny, a lot of people going in, they weren't sure what they were going to get from Callum, but he delivered He in was a big fantastic. Way. Star is born. It was, it, was, it was witty, it was clever, it was, it was entertaining. He was Arnold. And he was I Arnold. I was like, whoa. Well, there was that scene when we shot the 70 Olympia and Arnold and Sergio, or Callum and Sergio were up there yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. It was surreal for us because the set design, the wardrobe, the hair, the makeup, everything, it was just this unbelievable recreate. Like we were thrown back in time. That bit when he said, I'll break your jaw, I mean, that was, that was Arnold, yeah. it was. Well, it's funny because those scenes from take one to take 30, they morphed into these charming, kind of funny moments in yeah, the scene yeah. where at first, you know, he hadn't acted before, so it, it took a while That's to get That's crazy. He's, he's going to, yeah, he could do, yeah. Yeah, yeah sequel but, just with Cat Callum. Well, we're glad you guys came. Loved and it. I'm glad you liked Loved it. it. Loved and it. Um, it meant a lot that you were here, man. I appreciate yeah, you guys. No, it was a out. pleasure. We really enjoyed it. Good, really enjoyed good. It. Thanks for asking anyway. Enjoy the rest of Olympia weekend. Yes. We'll just starting. Just starting. Yeah, man. Cool. Yeah. Sorry. Callum.
Yes, so like Dan says, they they had they picked uh, Callum and they didn't really know what they were going to get out of him. He wasn't right. an experienced actor, but they said once they got all the makeup and everything on, as he said in that clip, they were really surprised and really pleasantly surprised. But you know what? He needs to make more films as a young Arnold. Yeah. They should do like a trilogy of Callum as a young Arnold and maybe get young Sergio Oliva Jr. as Sergio because he was in it as well. He didn't say anything, but he obviously he looked the part. Yeah. I mean, he knows his dad. He looked yeah. a similar physique in, in a lot of many ways. But um, I'd love to see like a series of films of a young Arnold. What he I went through when so. he was in like it, it, when he, he was in Austria when he first came to America. I think that would be incredible to have. A young Arnold, um, but uh, whatever they did, uh, oh, I actually thought the voice was so good. I thought I'd it was love dubbed. to watch a film like the story of Arnold's life. They did one oh. years ago called uh, "See Arnold Run," and was it um, from a child up? No, yeah, from it was like a like his, from when he went up to governor and it went up to a certain point. Yeah, there's a couple of different actors, but they had Roland Kickinger. At, uh, at IFBB Pro from the 90s um, and um, Ron said he wasn't very good <laughs> he said have you seen that film I said no I've not seen it do a, re- a redo I'll tell you what Callum could just make he could just he could just reel off two or three films as a young Arnold and I definitely definitely think people would want to see that mm. because honestly wait get and see this film because I'm telling you he's fantastic okay is it going to so. come out in the cinema is it going to come out in the cinema yeah I believe so, yeah, okay, yeah, because cool. yeah, they, they, this was the fourth premiere. I think they'd done one in Paris, and this was their Las Vegas one. Right. But um, funny, when we, as soon as we turned up, they said, oh, sorry, the four o'clock premiere, the actual premiere, is full. You'll have to go watch the 4.30 one with all the... Peasants. All the peasants. <laughs> I, was like, I am not having that. Do you know who I am? <laughs> Do you know who I am? But just in my monocle, as I'm yeah. sure you were going to say. <laughs> so, um, yes. <yeah. laughs> And then, and then I think one of the actors or directors or something, I, I think I recognised him from the film, I'm um, sure he was in the film, he kind, of, um, he kind of grabbed us and he says, you're media, right, to me and Ron. You're Giles Thomas, right? You're that Giles Thomas bloke. And I says, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, so, uh, and then he... he, he, he the baby, 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 baby. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Anyway, enough about Bigger, but I really enjoyed it. Ron yeah. wasn't so impressed. He, he was kind of... He was a bit more fact checking. Like he was like, uh, Joe Whedon never went to Austria. I, you know, he just saw Arnold, and then Arnold came to him. He never actually went physically. I was like, oh, come on, mate, it's a bit of artistic license. Yeah. Come on, they just, you know, they got to connect the story a bit. You know, go with it, Ron. Go with it. You know, and the Bob guy was never that violent or whatever. I, I think it's we. We don't know. It's it's just, uh, it's a it's a telling of a story. There's obviously dramatic artistic dramatic license. Itchy artistic armpits. license. Itchy armpits. I don't think there was any itchy armpits in the film. Ooh. But uh, yeah, so that was a real highlight of my trip. Okay, um, okay, what should we go to next? Uh, also, uh, I've decided I've got so much footage on my phone from the Olympia, and I've got so many interviews that I did that I can use. Um, I think to running up to Christmas, I'm going to do, I'm going to put a really big 90 minute or even a two hours, not two hours too long, a 90 minute Tiger and Rascal show Olympia special with through my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> through my phone because I got so much behind the scenes stuff. I mean, in fact, if you go to my. Through the eyes. If you, if you of go to. Giles Thomas. If you go to my Instagram there, uh, scroll right through and you'll see all the kind of the silly behind the scenes. Like I'm imagining. Media guys in, 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 the, in the field. Uh, working hard. I'm in, imagining it being out. really like, like everything's so magical. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, an aeroplane. Yeah. Oh look, bodybuilder. <laughs> well, it was for me. It is like that. That's, That's me and my mean, element. That's me like, and my element. You're like bodybuilding. Bodybuilding's number one fan. It just a lot of laughing and a lot of like just excitement and, and I think that would really come across in a Olympia it'd be my little gift. it'd be my, my gift to the world <laughs> my gift to you uh, and, if, and, if, and if everyone what if, if everyone doesn't everyone doesn't watch it stop everyone doing just, your double negative if everyone I, if, I hope everyone would watch it and I hope and I think everyone would enjoy it because yeah. I certainly would enjoy it okay. and it's a, it'd be a lot of work but I'm willing to do that for you guys <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, so let's talk about Chris Bumstead. Yeah, 
Hard Chris Bumstead, break. yes, he, he lost the Olympia, the classic Olympia by one point. Um, I actually saw him on the Thursday and he was still sporting this. Yes, so he still had his moustache. Yeah. Which I thought looked amazing. I Maybe say, that was what lost him that one point. Well, that's, well, exactly. Because yes. he took it off. He took it off. And I said, Chris, I said, so, oh, I love the tash, mate. That's very cool. And he said, um, he said, yes, but I've been told by, I won't say names, but I've been told by a few industry... Official. In, official, whatever. I, I can't remember the word. I don't even say the word he used. I can't remember. Uh, he says, but I've been advised to shave it off. I was like, oh. I said, well, look, mate. I said, this is what you should do. You should keep it, and if you don't win the Olympia, then you can, at least you can go off and be a 70s porn star. Yeah. So he laughed. Back up. You've always got to have a backup. Yeah, be a backup. Be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yes, yeah, so he's, he got rid of it. So I was very disappointed. So, um, and yes, and it was funny because I said, so how, how are you looking this year? And he goes, he said, yeah, he said, well, this year I've definitely got more muscle maturity. I said, Chris, for fuck's sake, mate, you're 23 years old. <laughs> You were 22 last year. I said, don't give me that muscle maturity bullshit. I said, I said this. So, yeah, I just, I just thought, I thought that was such a funny thing to say. Yeah, but more muscle maturity. Uh, you're tw- you know, 23. Yeah. Wow. Piss off, man. But, uh, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, he's a nice kid anyway, really nice kid. And he, um, he actually tore his groin, I think, three weeks out, which was very serious. And today he posted something on Instagram and he has, I won't even try and say this, but he has this disease. Uh, I can't say it, sorry. And this is something new but that he's, he's it's, found out about. Yes, it's something, I'm looking into it because I haven't watched the video yet, but it's something to do with his kidneys. Okay. Um, he was born with it, apparently, and it flared up a few weeks out. But yeah. he said, don't worry, everyone, I'm healthy. Yeah. He was actually crying on the video. Oh. And, um, God, people love Chris Bumstead, you know. And when, when I, every time I meet him, he's... He's, he's such a lovely. You think maybe at twenty three, being that, being going from that to that in terms of popularity, you think maybe he would get caught up in it. But he, he seems it's to. It's about you, I think, how you've been brought up. Yes. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And I think if you get that solid foundation mm. from a kid, I don't think it matters what happens in your life as an adult. You 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 keep that. Yeah. Grounded. And his sister competed in the figure, Melissa Bumstead. How did she do? I don't. I can't remember. I'll, I'll bring it up on the screen afterwards because I'll research it afterwards. But uh, yeah, I don't think she placed top six, maybe sixth. I don't know. Um, but she's also with Ian Vallier, who took fourteenth in the Open Olympia. Now that's a guy that really impressed me. What do you mean with? I think they're married. Right. So yeah, they all seem tagging each other in. Okay. So you had three three people from the same family or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, now he's, they're married to each other. All uh, at the Olympia. Three at the Olympia. So there's lots of group photos of those three. Amazing. But, he, but Ian Vallier really impressed me. There's a guy who just got through to the Olympia on, after, after I think his second or third show. And somebody probably thought wasn't on anyone's radar. He was, he was one of the talks to the show. He looked incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, I tell you, looked really good as well. Your friend, Polly Pocket. Polly. Polly Pocket. I've forgotten his real name. Michael Lockett. Michael Lockett. Yeah. Yeah, Polly Pocket's in my head. Polly Pocket. Yeah, so there's something about that guy's muscularity that is just, it doesn't even show in photos. No, it's crazy when you see him on stage. When I was seeing him at the expo, in fact, I've got a little bit of footage of uh, Ron interviewing uh, Polly. (laughs) So let's check that out now. Yes, so that's uh, Michael. I mean, I just, he took, uh, I believe he took 15th, I think 15th place. Um, like I said, just photos and video, don't do that guy. Just You've got to see him in the flesh. He's just, he's, a, he's like an alien, that guy. Yeah. I love it. The shoulders and everything. He's just got a different look to his like muscle. like a big prize bull, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yes. So next up is, oh, we did a, going back to the Rascal Range, <laughs> we did a little account visit, didn't we? We did. We went uh, an account visit. I'm actually um, 
doing a guest spot for these guys as well in about two weeks. They mm -hmm. have like an independent show. It's the biggest independent show in the UK, I think. Um, the Yorkshire, uh, Open Yorkshire. Um, so we'll be there with the Rascal Range as mm -hmm. well. So yeah, we just went down to his gym to do a little visit. And we bumped into another Mr. Olympia, didn't we? Arnold. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, what's your... Cardboard cutout. I'll show the... This uh... was a while ago now. Yeah, it seems, feels like ages ago now, doesn't it? So we'll go to that now. guys and girls, we are here with another promo and sampling day with the Rosie Rascal Range. We are here at Ultimate Physiques in Castleford. We're giving out samples of the Cola Cube and the Kiwi and Pineapple Cooler Amino Spark with Ashwagandha to reduce cortisol and stress. So people are going set. I'm way too fucking swole. I'm way too fucking swole. I lift shit. Come on, love. Right. Okay, we're nearly done. Way too fucking swole. Yes, so that was a little count visit. So I just wanted to slip that in there. Obviously very important because this show is brought to you by the Rosie Rascal Range and uh, keeps all this going, ticking along nicely. Keeps us engaged. Okay, now also Ronnie went in, Ronnie Coleman, our good friend, uh, posted a little video today, which I will show. Let's go to that now. Mm -hmm. This is going for a little stroll. Not major. A little cardio. Yep. We'll get y'all right up too now. <laughs> Looking good, brother. Two days after surgery. Trying to get warmed up. I see that didn't affect your traps or your chest any. Still swole. <laughs> yes, so that's Ronnie after his 10th surgery. Now, I can say that the latest surgery is not to do with him going back to the gym and lifting weights. It's absolutely not to do with that. It's to do with, I can't, uh, it's to do, what shall I say? Well, is the problems with the the previous operation? Yes, the yes. Links. Yeah, the, yeah. There, there's a bit of um, some legal things going on, uh, but basically, it shouldn't. He shouldn't have had ten surgeries. It should have been maybe a couple, and uh, this this is being dealt with, and we will report back in due due course. Yeah. So anyway, but Ronnie, uh, he was saying in the video, he's um, he's very happy because he's never normally walking two days after a, an operation. It's never, even with the walker, it's but not. He's walking now. He's he? walking and he's, uh, so he said that's a very, he said that's, that's a good feeling because he's been very, it's been very, obviously you can imagine being very, very tough for him. So, okay then, well, I think we've covered just pretty much everything in this one, this episode. So yes, I would like to end, i also show a video of me and Ron the moment we finished our last video, because actually before, before I went out to uh, the Vegas, I, I kind of put a lot of pressure on myself that I wanted to outdo the coverage that we did last year, just me and Ron and the, the video guys. And um, we did it, we did it. We did, uh, we did more videos. I think the interviews were better. Uh, worked really, I worked as hard as I possibly could to provide as good a content as possible. Uh, the, scene, the response I seem to get from the comments and all the you know, the, the, the views and everything seem to be very positive. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy. In fact, if you want to go back and check all those interviews, they're still all on musculardevelopment.com. <laughs> so go back and check those. I've got interviews with Tony Freeman, um, Jay Cutler. I mean, all the pros, Derek Lunsford, Jose, Jose Raymond. 
Um, Jen Taylor, I did tons of interviews. Uh, Charles Griffin one was very good. Um, he messaged me yesterday. He said his Charles Griffin said his wife said she was. Um, so it was the best interview she said she'd seen him do because she said you seemed you you two seem to be so excited to see each other. <laughs> so yeah, so fantastic. Oh, Sean Clarendon did as well. So yes, I'd like to go to that video now of me and Ron. Okay, Ron, that's the end of a very successful Olympia coverage. I think you met your goal. You wanted to exceed last year. I'd say you did it, Charles. We we did it, mate. It's a team nah, effort. It was all you. It was all me. Yeah, it was all. I'm riding your coat, days. Like days ahead. Best yeah. dress commentator, <laughs> Charles Tiger Thomas. This is my Olympia suit. I bought this in 2016 for the 2016 Olympia. I wear it for the finals every year. Uh, I bought three suits for me, but this is the one I wore. It's special. Yeah. So what what are we gonna do now, then, Ron? Uh, as usual, uh, no one told me about any after parties because we think, need an after party. They think I'm old and boring, so no one tells me about where the parties are. So, so we need to we need to catch up on some drinking and socialising and uh, basically Vegas. So that sounds like a plan. It sounds capital. It sounds like a very good plan. All right, see you later, and we'll see you next year. Yes, so that was uh, a job well done. Okay, Rosie, well, I think we're gonna end the show with a Sean Road and Nick Vision video with, a, with footage taken from the Olympia. And uh, yeah, so that was, that's the end of the episode. So uh, anything you'd like to add? Good to be back. Good to be back, yes, and of course, we'll be back next week. Um, we still don't know whether whether I will or will be going to Prague for the the EVLS Prague show. I, I don't, don't definitely can't. You definitely can't. I don't know yet. The um, it's not being confirmed, but that's next week. Um, Sean Roden is down to do it. Roly is definitely down to do it because I spoke to him as we were checking out the hotel on last Monday. Um, and Nathan Diash is doing it. Uh, Britt James Hollinshead, and there's a few other obviously European pros. Ricardo's doing the two twelve. Ricardo Correa, so that'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, and uh, it's good to be back. Uh, so, with Rosie Rascal Hart, I'm Giles Thomas, and we will see you next week for Muscle News Week. See you later. Time to get some interviews now in the expo, so blah 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 blah.